ອົງຈຸນຍຸບແລະປະກາດບັນຕໍກິດຈຳນາການນິຕິວິທີສັມນາກາໃຫ້ສະກິດບັນຕໍນີ້ສົມເຈີຍສາພະລິຍາຄິ
จีพีแซคือการกรุบสกัดไทยทนอระบอมโนในขนมพิซซ่าระเพียบในอำเภอระบอมบกุลได้เติบบานประเพณีประชังนางปุ่นเนตโตเวียดนามองจุ่มนมจุ่มแร่สลาดบงอาจหนึ่งเหมือนบานพิจารณาทาจีอำเภอเนียนียในการทวีตรณกรรมหรืออำเภอได้บังกอเมียนการชี้จับโดยเจตนาเตโนเวียปัจเจปมบานเมียนเพียบระลุนตันดังการกรุบกรองตามใบมนุษย์หรือสกัดไทยทนอระบอมโนลายกาทเวมโนสเคียดดาวเจตนาเนตโตเวียดนามแตงอ้อเนมันตีซอมาเผยมวยตราบานสำหรับเจ้าสัตว์ขนมประเภทเด็กบอลละมือในห้อยสักไข่กามรบสะใสรูปทอดปอรมีนได้บานมอปีมันตีซอมาเผยมวยจำลายซาระเพียบนังกาสอบสายตามวิชุได้เนมีนจีไอกระซานหนุ่ยคือแตงอ้อในห้อยได้บังฮางท่าเมียนกาประหาชีวิตได้บานกึศกูตกจีมนแต่เลือกพวกเนตโตเวียดนามจนจับจ้าลูกนี้บ้านแต่ตัวสกอลค่ะผมเมียนชนเจียดเวียดนามนามเนตระบานตกไอรู้จีวัตเตบอดุกัดตัวนังกรมปรมตอนชนะมวยปอนประมวลรอยห้าสประมวยไอเหล่านี้ขยมส้มโจตัดดอลประเภทตีใบนังเจียประเภทจองกรอยในอุกัดกรรมแต่บ้านเจ้าประกันเนื้อขนมไดกาบรรจุเรื่องเตยจุ่มนมจุ่มเรียกบอดุกัดโนสเคียดนังกาทเวติรนกรรมแต่จะการมลบโดยฉบับปรมตอนเจียกามปุจีคือฉบับปรมตอนกามปุจีชนะมปอมร้อยห้าสประมวยโต๊ะใบจะบับปรมตอนอันตรจิตได้ปีอุกาตการบัญชางมนุษย์จิตนังกาบมปีมปีนยันทุนทงอตะเลือนุสัญญาติกรองเสือนายอาจทำควาดในตรงเวอปรมตอนน้องกำรัดในเพียบทุนทงอข้อข้อคนเดียวก็ได้ก่อฉบับปรมตอนจิตระบอยยืงมันแมนอัดต่ำไรของกาปฏิบัติการหลายโดยได้ตุลาการนี้เชียตุลาการสำหรับปรับเชียเปรอดกามปุจีเชียดำโบมังอ้อหนึ่งสำคัญมังพอดเปิดเพื่อเอาสาธีรณะจนเมื่อเคยถ่าฉบับเชียเปิดบานกรุบโดยการเจ้าประกันบอดละมือตามฉบับเชียบังฮาเนี่ยเคยถ่าฉบับเชียกามปุจีอาจกาเปียปุกเก็บบานนองเนียมสหกรมมวยโดยสาตายตุลาการนี้คือเชียตุลาการกามปุจีอันตรตบนิจกรรมการเจ้าประกันอุกาตกรรมจิตคือจะการช่วยเป็นเลื่อนในสมาร์ทได้ในเพียบจีบจ้าในกัดดำนาการนิเตวิธีตุลาการสำหรับประชาชนแตงมูลพองนั่งตุลาการกัมปุจีพองยุทธศาสตร์ขนมกะระในนี้นั่งกะระในดาวเตยเซนเตียสได้ปิดฉบับจิตตำนองเจียนนั่งช่วยดาวตุมรอบขนมกะอันวัดฉบับในขนมตุลาการจิตตัวใบเจียผมเบียนตุลาการในขนมการปุจีปุจีทับปไตดับใบปฏิบัติกรมปรุงตัวการปุจีขนมชั้นนำปอมร้อยห้าสิบประมวยก็ได้ก็กรมนี่ในใต้เมียนนำไล่จะฉบับปรุงตัวในขนมปฏิเจียดอกได้แล้วในเปรตได้ปุ๊กไม่กระหอบลางการนำนายตัวเจียยางนาก็ได้ก็การรู้เรื่องประปอนจุดเด็ดทอปรุงตัวการเอาจักรเจนเอาออกปีติกรงนังการเพิ่มมนุษย์เคียตเลือปุ๊กจะกรมปุ๊กเมทวีกาเปียกได้เนียนเนียปุ่มบานเดาะหดในกระตับปากกจีอันตรจิตเราบอกการปุจีปุจีทับไตรองกาเทเนียถ้าปุ่ดได้บานประพฤติเดาอุกระทุนทุ่งเงาหนึ่งตะบานนอมครวนยกตะการตุลาการตะตามฉบับขนมปฏิหนุ่มลอยมันท่าจีกาเลือกตะจัดนามวยก็ดอยได้นอมอ่อยชนจอบเจ้าลูกนี่หนึ่งถนัดกล่อมเราบอกกวาดบานตะตัวสกอลในตรงเบอร์เนื้อมันตีซอมาเผยมวยนุ่มตีคือกรมปรุงตัวการปฏิจจฉนามปอมรอยหาสประมวยในแต่บ้านกำหนดในยุคเมื่อใดอย่างฉบับล้อถ้าอำเภอเราบอกปุ่นนู้คือเจียบบอดลำบึกปรุงตัวน้องเมตราใบในฉบับได้ปีกาบังเกิดองจุ่มนุ่มจุ่มเรียบวิสมัยน้องตัวลาการปฏิจจบันดอลลำนาเอาองจุ่มนุ่มจุ่มเรียบถือกากัดสกัดได้แต่เลยจนซองไซเนียนี่ปีกาประเพณีบอดอุกระเจี๊ยและมวยจุ่มนวลแบบตัวนังกรองปรุงตอนการปุจีชนะปอมร้อยห้าสิบมวยปอตาบางฮันหัวปีวิมาเตะสองไซอุกระตกรรมเมียนปีนองจำนำอุกระตังโนเมียนมนุษย์เขียดนังอัมเปอร์ติรนกรรมตระบานประเพณีนมันตีซอมาเผยมวยอัมปีมนุษย์เขียดเมียนอัมเปอร์มนุษย์เขียดจำนวนปีได้ไหมบานดักเจียบอดอุกระตังนองกรองปรุงตอนการปุจีชนะปอมร้อยห้าสิบมวยเราบ้านประพฤติเนื้อมันตีซอมาเผยมวยกึ่งอำเภอมนุษย์เขียดได้บ้านกึ่งตกยมุนแต่การล้างมอปีอำเภอแตงไลได้บ้านประพฤติ
รือมีเจตนาเกิดกู้ตุกจมบนขนมบ่มน้องทั่วไอ้สลับนังกาสลับในกาหมอกปีอำเภอโดยมีการเกิดกู้ตุกจมบนขนมบ่มน้องทั่วไอ้มีระบวนอำเภอมันจะเขียนได้เกิดตุกจมบนคือเจียมูลไฮในกาสลับเพียบชราลมพอดในมันตีซอมาพยมุ้ยกาสลับในกาอำเภอเนียนเนียในบ้านเกิดกู้ตุกจมบนโดยเจียอำเภอตระนกรรมกาทั่วบ้านโดยอำนุสตอร์กาควาคาดอาหารอันนามัยนังกาไทยตอนภายไปจะซะมันบ้านกรุบกรวนแต่บ้านดำเริบดอกปุ๋ยได้มันตอนมันบ้านรุ่งเนยบ้านยูหมอมตราบ้านประหารชีวิตเจ้าอมปีอมเปื้อติรนกรรมสระเดียงขณีนิดได้มีนอมเปื้อติรนกรรมจำนวนปีเซ็งขณีแต่บ้านดักบอดอุกรัดในขนมกรองปรุงตอนชนามหาสมุยตราบ้านผัดเปิดเนยมันตีซอมาเผยมวยคืออมเปื้อติรนกรรมแต่ตราบ้านผัดเปิดดอยมีนเจตนาดำใบอ้อยบานบอกในปอดเมียนได้เมียนประจาวในขนมกาประพฤติบอดอุกรัดหรือมาชมตามระยะกาบังกอบุษนามหนังอำเภอติรนกรรมได้ตรบานประพฤติในขนมกับนัดมวยดำใบทวีกาบังกราบหรือกาทวีอำเภอสหายุงขนมอำเภอติรนกรรมคือตรบานบังกอล่างได้เมียนกาเกิดกู้จิมุนแต่ลืมพวกเนี่ยตุ่มเนียนเนียนเลยมันตีซอมาพยมวยได้เมียนเจตนาดำใบอ้อยบานบอกในจำไลซาพีพอเรียนได้บาดดอกสร้างจนปีจำไลซาลเพียบอย่างนี้น้องไอ้เมียนกาจับขลุ่นพวกนี้ได้ตรบานเกิดลายดักทาจิกมังแต่เปรกรายหมอกพวกนี้ตรบานเกิดปลาเนื้ออำเภอติรนกรรมตะลือนังสำหรับเจ้าบันไทมเลยนี่เวียมันเมียนกาสร้างไซเอาไว้เตี้ยดได้ถ่าเป็นมวยระยะกาลในกะปฏิบัติการเนื้อมันตีซอมาเผยมวยอำเภอติรนกรรมตรบานเกิดปลาจิอุปกรณ์ดำใบบังกราบตะลือพวกนี้ตกกุมนัดอำปีอำเภอสหายงขนองบ้านดำนาคาเนเปียเป็นกุกในเตียงมูลหายบ้านรอกเคยเนกาสมใจเจนหมอกยางสลดรุนทดเนขนองตุ่มรงดอกโคเคยในอำเภอติรนกรรมแต่ตราบ้านเจนบัญชีดอยจนจอบจ้าลุกนี่หนึ่งแต่ตราบ้านอันยาได้ปวดถนัดกล่าวมาบอกก่อนหายบรรทัดตอนนี้นี่ขยมประกอบเอาสหการไรบอกขยมเธอกาสกายสันทานตีปีได้เจ็บนายเพียบบรรจับยาสมอกลสมเจอสาบินยาอันตรจิตขอบคุณท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านประธานท่านขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูงต่อมาการจิมบุชากระไรบอกขยมสูง For the 12,000 men, women, and children killed so cruelly, and what is justice for their grieving families and friends that have to put up with that pain for so long? Your judgment will not bring them back to life. Your judgment will not allow those infants. 
to wonder at every new thing. Your judgment will not allow those children to play in the street, those teenagers to dance, those young adults to fall in love, those parents to hug their children and their parents to look proudly at what they've left behind. For the victims of S21, those experiences were cut. Our job as prosecutors is to assist your honours in achieving a sense of justice that separates your judgment from the judgment, the 12,000 judgments that the accused gave at S21. Justice is done by applying the ECC law, a law that demands a fair trial, a law that demands convictions based on facts only proved beyond reasonable doubt, and a law that demands that your sentence is in accordance with international standards of fairness. A just sentence in law is not based on revenge, but on retribution and deterrence. It's society's way of demonstrating that its people are worth protecting and their lives are worthy of respect. It's a way of sending a message to others who may be tempted to commit crimes like this against their fellow human beings. In this case, it's the Cambodian and international community's way of saying S21 should never have happened and it should never happen again. So, what is a just sentence for this accused? It will depend on the gravity of the crimes, the impact on the victims, and his role, the accused role in them. Do you believe him when he says he was a hostage and a prisoner of the regime from 1971 until the mid-1990s. A prisoner and a hostage forced to kill and torture human beings on a daily basis against his will and under the threat of death with no choice or no chance to escape. Was the author of the crimes in reality a victim of the system? Your Honours, we have stated in our written submissions, and we will do so again today, that the accused was neither a prisoner, nor a hostage, nor a victim. The evidence proves the contrary. It clearly demonstrates that he was an idealist, a CPK revolutionary, a crusader who was prepared to sacrifice everything for his cause, prepared to torture and kill willingly for the good of the revolution, no matter how grotesquely misguided it was. Your Honours, this is the significant difference between the prosecution and the defence. Your resolution of this issue will be essential to the establishment of the accused liability and consequently the determination of the appropriate sentence. With this in mind, in this part of our submission, we will first point, Your Honours, to the evidence of the extent and the nature of the accused participation, and then second submit 
uh, how his participation should be legally qualified under the law and address you on relevant factors we believe you should take into account when determining your sentence. But first, I would like to put the actions of the accused in a wider context. During the democratic Capuchia regime, the accused was promoted to a very senior and important position, living a comfortable family life, whilst other members of the regime, and in fact many senior cadres, were purged. This was no coincidence. Far from being an ordinary person or an ordinary party member and an accidental security chief, as he has claimed, he manoeuvred himself into the privileged position of S21 chairman by hard work and meticulous attention to detail. The evidence shows he was a true believer in the communist cause who wanted to eliminate his enemies. As such, he developed a strong, direct, one-on-one -on -one connection with the senior leaders of the CPK. Having known them for some years before, having committed crimes, horrendous crimes at S21 under their supervision, he continued to work with them and for them for almost 15 years after the regime collapsed. After the 17th of April 1975, he held a privileged and trusted position with the CTK. Senior leaders who also lived, worked and met with him at the railway station in Phnom Penh from the end of June 1975. During this time, he was directly involved in the establishment of S21. He was one of only two people invited by Sun Sen to the meeting at the railway station on the 15th of August 1975, when the creation of S21 was announced. In the accused's own words, he was there, ears and nose at S21. He influenced its very name. Number 21 was this accused's own communication number. As the evidence shows, S21 was his professional pride. It was his prison in name and in reality his S21. The staff of the prison, the accused, handpicked his most trusted interrogators and torturers from M13 to follow him there. Having committed crime more than before, he could rely on them to perform this gruesome work he was about to embark on. He wanted to organize and supervise the S21 machinery, but did not want to do the dirty work himself. He prepared for this new role thoroughly. He collected specialist books on the subject of torture, intelligence and espionage. Amazingly, 34 years later, he was able to quote from these books to the trial chamber. This is quite astounding for someone who claims that he didn't have enough time to read them. He also collected documents from ministries, public buildings and Lon Nol's former house in Phnom Penh. Under examination, he said he did this in order to arrest the officials of the former regime. In the beginning, as deputy of S21, he worked hard to make the prison operational. He taught interrogation techniques and held political training classes. As head of the interrogation section, he vigorously pursued enemies by ordering interrogations and torture. Within six months of the establishment of S21, the accused was promoted to the position of chairman. It was clear from his own evidence that he had far superior intelligence and interrogation skills and great and inspired greater trust in the senior leaders 
in the former chairman Nath, who later ended up, ended up a prisoner at age 21. After his appointment as chairman, for close to three years, the accused went on to fully repay and justify the trust placed in him by his superiors. Through his leadership from March 1976, S21 became efficient, efficient at identifying and killing its enemies, and the accused became the essential link between the regime's criminal policies and their execution. Outside S21, he worked closely with CPK senior leaders, continually advising them and reporting to them the content of the important prisoner confessions, thereby facilitating the ident identification and destruction of enemies, and crucially, fueling the regime's paranoia. As we have heard from the expert psychiatrists and psychologists, these close relationships with these senior leaders suited the accused, not simply because they were a part of his duties, but because, because of his constant need to be mentored and of his desire to please and be praised for his work. During the first 18 months as chairman, the accused reported directly to Sun Sen, Minister of Defence and Chief of the General Staff, of the Revolutionary Army of Cambodia, one of the most senior people in the regime. During this trial, the accused has spoken fondly of Sun Sen, calling him his respected teacher, professor, and leader. The two men shared a similar approach, a communist ideology, and it was Sun Sen who introduced the accused to the party as a full rights member in 1969. The accused described Sun Sen as his biggest influence, and Sun Sen would have in turn considered him a gifted protege indeed. As we've heard from the accused, Sun Sen was replaced by Nguyen Chia in August 1977 when the war with Vietnam began to escalate. Despite this change, the accused retained his position as chairman throughout the intensified purges towards the end of the regime. I will now discuss the extent of his authority at S21. In the judicial investigation, he originally claimed that his authority within S21 was only theoretical and that he was a chairman in name only. However, at trial, he became more truthful. He explained his total authority at S21 in these words. If I wanted to know anything, I can do that. I can ask anyone to report. I can stop anything. I want to direct anything. I can do that. In other words, nothing happened within S21 without his knowledge or approval. We've all seen firsthand during this trial that the accused is meticulous, a logical man bordering on the obsessive. A master of detail with a brilliant memory, albeit selective. There is no doubt that under his authority, rules were always obeyed and order was always maintained. This is remarkable, remarkable bearing in mind the staff under his control S21 numbered more than 2,000. The evidence has shown that staff obedience at S21 was a result of the corruption of the accused, careful selection and training of personnel, his enforcement of military-style discipline and his policy of immediate arrest and execution for those that did not follow the political line or perform their duties precisely. Simple mistakes, such as falling asleep on the job, or releasing prisoners' names uh, in such punishment. We have heard former S21 guards such as Sao Metz, Cox Ross, Chim Sao, Sek Dan and Prat Khan 
testify to this ruthless enforcement of rules which instilled fear in all his staff. These rules were designed, above all, to prevent the escape of prisoners. This was a difficult task, considering the accused was responsible, responsible for over 15,500 prisoners at any one time in the main compound of S21 and many more at Bresa. He ensured that breach of security protocol was considered grave and was dealt with immediately and severely. Hugh Sray, the head of Bresa and one of the accused closest advisers, was arrested following the escape of his radio telephone operator. The accused condemned Hugh Sray to death. And even 30 years later, his testifying to Hugh Sray's lapse was not reasonable. By contrast, the rape of a prisoner went unpunished. However, as strict as these rules were, the accused applied them selectively. Initially, S21 staff included NAF's men from Division 703 and the accused's own from M13. Over time, a disproportionate number of NAF's men were purged and executed. In contrast, the accused's most trusted men survived. We know from the combined prisoner list and reports concerning the enemy situation within S21 that at least 155 executed detainees were former S21 staff members. Though the accused has claimed that the arrest and execution of staff required a superior's approval, it is clear that, at the very least, he initiated or approved those arrests and executions. He Testified that no request was ever denied. In practice, therefore, it was his decision that was the primary cause of the execution of his staff. Even in this respect, where he had ample options to avoid such an extreme form of punishment against those who breached his rules, he chose not to take them. I will now turn to the evidence which proves the obsessive, disciplined and merciless way in which this accused implemented the extremist ideology of the CPK at S21. As chairman with absolute authority over the staff and operations, the accused was able to implement the CPK political line without obstruction. This required him through his staff to interrogate, torture, investigate and smash all those who deemed, who were deemed to be enemies of the revolution. His principal role at S21 was to ensure that the criminal line of the party was rigorously enforced. During the trial, the accused admitted that he alone was responsible both for the political training and the guided selection of enemies and training on the techniques of interrogation. As a trained teacher, meticulous interrogator, and a true believer in the CPK's ideology, the accused was perfectly suited. To the role. He also realised that his time was best spent on passing on his expertise to others, mostly young, naive recruits who would inflict pain on his and his superiors' behalf. He has admitted his duty was to, and I quote, indoctrinate to make them absolute. Your Honours have examined the notebooks of S21 cadre who described this training in detail. One jotting from a training session identifies the prevalence of cruel practices. Torture cannot be avoided. It only differs as to whether it's a little or a lot. That's all. Interrogator Pratt Khan testified that political education and and interrogation training were combined so that staff would take an absolute stance against the enemy. 
ហើយគ្មានគ្មេងរបស់អ្នកនៅក្នុងអ្នកអាយគ្មេងរបស់អ្នកនៅក្នុងអ្នកអាយគ្មេងរបស់អ្នកនៅក្នុងអ្នកអ
ហើយនិងជនជាប់ចោលមានលក្ខណៈសកម្មជាមុនជាជាតិ Thousands of arrests. interrogation interrogation ពីវិធីការគ្រប់ជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជ
Other documents from the case file show that the leaders of military and administrative units corresponded directly with the accused. For example, Comrade Trin from the Kampong Som Port Authority signed a report addressed directly to the accused in 1977. The accused admitted that Comrade San from Division 310 penned him a letter accompanied by a list of prisoners arrested from within that unit. The accused's advice was similarly sought on more specific security-related incidents, such as the investigation of seditious leaflets criticizing Ankar, which had been distributed in Phnom Penh. The accused participated in this meeting on the 9th of September 1976 with Peng and Son Sen attending. Your Honours, in summary, it's abundantly obvious that the accused played a central role in identifying, locating and arresting enemies, and that in doing so, he maintained substantial communication with both senior leaders of the CPK and with chiefs of various units as for the accused participation in the detention of prisoners in 1971, this enabled the accused to keep track of the movement and the number of the prisoners in SP21. When the prison, when the prison became overcrowded, he ordered Hoare's deputy to kill excess prisoners to create space for new arrivals. In this very courtroom, the accused testified that this was done so they did not, and I quote, waste any more food on them. The accused was fully aware of the deplorable squalid and truly inhumane conditions in which the prisoners were kept. He visited the main compound frequently particularly the interrogation rooms. He admits seeing the injuries of tortured prisoners. He would have seen how sick and emaciated they had become due to the appalling conditions in which they were kept. Witnesses as well as the accused have confirmed that he set and implemented this included ensuring that prisoners had no freedom of movement, were denied adequate food, clothing, sanitation and medical care. Although he paid close attention to particular prisoners, he ignored the majority because, as he has told this court, he could not do his job so effectively if he recognized their humanity. Whether infants or elderly, he testified that he treated them all like animals. The arrest and detention of prisoners at S21 was just the beginning of the accused's involvement. As we've already stated for the accused and the CPK, the interrogation of enemies, the prisoners, with the object of extracting their confessions was the most important part of the process. It requires specialists like the accused, a specialist in interrogation with both extensive experience and strong conviction. He trained his subordinate interrogators to supervise their work. He knew what specific orders to give to individual interrogators as they, and he, and only he knew and confirmed when their interrogation was complete. In particular, the accused relished the interrogation of high-level prisoners, which he either directed personally or closely supervised. At first, he only admitted to interrogating one prisoner, North Zone Secretary Koi Tong. At trial, he admitted to interrogating two more. There may well be more. 
For high-level prisoners whom he did not personally interrogate, the evidence shows that the accused diligently monitored their interrogations on a daily basis, issuing specific instructions at various junctures. His willingness to interrogate prisoners himself and his obsessive attention to the details of the interrogation process portray a chairman heavily invested in the work of S21. Yet his ownership of the process was not the only revealing sign. His indifference to the suffering of the victims shows a man who has surrounded himself so much to the purpose of S21 that he could not ignore one of the most human of impulses to alleviate the pain of others. A number of high-ranking prisoners, including Huy Nim, Set Che and Meek Tush, wrote to the accused to beg for mercy and to beg him to spare the lives of their family members. Not only was he unmoved, the evidence shows that he wrote back to the prisoners and rebuked them. When Set Che pleaded that he had been wrongly arrested, the accused responded that in all the days of working in security, he had never known a case where an individual had been wrongly accused. So hardened and absolute, the accused found no place for mercy for even his closest friends and associates. His earliest mentor and professor, K. Kim Hood, and Hood's wife, Tim Sarin, were arrested and brought to S21. Both were horribly tortured. Hood was beaten and forced to eat excrement. Sarin was raped with a stick. The accused had no real response to these outrages, apart from denials that he knew anything about them. Those denials lack all credibility in view of his own annotations on the very pages describing the torture of K. Kim Hood. The accused annotations ordering torture and directing questions to interrogators are seen on hundreds of confessions left behind at S21. In this case, Your Honours, you've only seen a small portion of them. However, these representative samples amply demonstrate this complete lack of mercy your honours will remember this cruel annotation linked to the interrogator questioning a Vietnamese woman. And I quote, Interrogate meticulously serious but moderate torture in order to find the network. Hit until she stops saying she went to Vietnam with her grandfather to cure his cancer and the problem of menstruation. Your Honours, we'll remember the annotations of the accused which directed and ordered the method of interrogation of Mem San, San Ya. After ordering that Ya be tortured throughout the interrogation, the accused taunted him for trying to inform the upper echelon that his prior confessions were the product of torture. After losing patience with Ya, the accused boarded Pon, his interrogator, to use hot methods, reassuring him that if he slipped and Ya died, it would not be a violation of revolutionary Discipline. As counsel, counsel for Civil Party Group 1 said yesterday, the accused assertion that the purpose of these annotations was to bluff prisoner lack any credibility. Although the charges do not include the crimes committed at M13, your honours have heard and read the evidence that proves that the accused personally tortured prisoners at this security centre before starting work at S21. Your honours will remember the accused's testimony 
ដោយចំណោយយ៉ាងយូរនិងការស៊ូជំឡោយយ៉ាងយូរនិងការធ្វើទៅរន់កម្មទៅលើរូបលោកណាមសុនដែលជាអ្នកទស្សន៍នៅ
What should we make of this personal involvement in beating and torturing over a period of seven and a half years? It provides clear proof that his argument that he was forced and unwilling to carry out his work at S21 is simply untrue. Why would he personally involve himself in torture and beating when he was not ordered or required of him? The answer is that his ardent beliefs in furthering the goals of the CPK spilled over into gratuitous violence against prisoners unordered and Even at a stage when due to his seniority he was not participating in torture on a daily basis. We submit that infliction, infliction of pain was not something he hated. It was something that he found both necessary and perversely gratifying. I will now discuss the accused's involvement in the analysis of the information that resulted from the torture and interrogation sessions, the infamous confessions. These so-called confessions were the lifeblood of S21's criminal machinery. The accused had the authority alone to analyse and annotate thousands of pages of these documents and to synthesise their content into coherent reports for his superiors. Only a portion of this meticulous work remains, but from what we have, the attention to detail he lavished upon, these, upon this hideous endeavour is astonishing. The result of his work, the accused admits, was that suspects whose names he extracted from the confessions ended up waiting their turn to be tortured and killed at S21. And all this while he knew that 90% of these victims presented no danger to the police. In the beginning, the accused regularly reported his information to his superiors, Sun Sen. When Nu and Chia took over from Sun Sen, the accused reported to him in person rather than on the telephone. Such briefings apparently took place every day. The accused is claimed by 1978 Nu and Chia paid little attention either to the confessions the accused was sending or to his annotations upon them. Yet the court has seen annotations that prove that even in the period the accused continued to work on the confessions, in fact, as late as December 1978, a period when the confusion of the regime and the paranoia had set in. His, com his commitment was not fading. The picture the accused has attempted to paint is that he was neutrally relaying the information contained in the confessions and that the information was obtained from questions specifically posed by his superiors. Given the thousands of prisoners who pass through S21 every year, this degree of micromanagement from Sun Sen and Nguyen Chia is simply impossible. For the most important prisoners, the accused may well have received specific guidance. But for the majority of prisoners, he applied his own initiative and techniques and exercised his discretion on the mode of interrogation and torture. The accused has claimed that the sole purpose of his annotations was to enable his superiors to grasp the content of the confessions quickly, and thus his annotations were devoid of subjective content. This claim is absurd. The accused role of S21 was to investigate the prisoners and to provide analysis of their responses to his superiors. After all, as we've stated, he was a highly trusted and reliable security expert and specialist in interrogations. This court has seen numerous examples of him synthesizing the content of the confessions into summary reports presenting his own analyses and conclusions and requesting authorization 
ពីស្កាកំណត់ <coughs> Torture-induced confessions together into one massive interconnected network of plots. This plan, dated in 1978, confirms that the accused was deeply invested in his work and was maximizing his intelligence gathering by his interrogation teams this was at a time when he said he was the most disillusioned with the party I'll now turn to the accused role in the execution of the over 12,000 victims of S21. The ultimate crime of S21, of course, was the murder of all but a handful of prisoners. The accused admitted that he knew every prisoner at S21 was destined for execution, regardless of sex, age, background, or actual guilt or innocence. You have seen the evidence of the documents contained containing the accused direct written orders to kill. They are chilling in their unemotional, unapologetic, ruthless efficiency. On a list of seventeen prisoners, including nine children, he simply wrote, Uncle Peng killed them all. On another he wrote, interrogate four, kill the rest. Sometimes he simply ticked off names with the annotation, smashed. Of course, given his workload, having to manage the arrest, detention, interrogation, torture and killing of an average of at least 300 prisoners a month, personal participation in the killing would not have been the best use of his time. As we noted earlier, the accused caught and directed his staff in the art of interrogation, torture and killing. So we could achieve what business operators call economies of scale. He basically managed his staff and facilities to the best of his ability to ensure that the CPK would capture and kill as many enemies as possible. There's been much debate concerning the accused claim that the consent of his superiors was required before every torture and every execution. In one sense, this is immaterial, given that the accused was responsible for the entire operation at S21. In any event, whether the orders of the senior leaders were required or not, it was the accused who transmitted them and ensured their implementation. As he has admitted, admitted after an incident when he sent four but had more, his deputy sent a prisoner for execution without complete confession, Sun Sen subsequently required all executions to be pre-approved by the accused. But regardless of this, while fully aware and approving of S21, the senior leaders would have been too busy or too aloof to examine the cases of anyone apart from the most important prisoners. For the vast majority of prisoners, they trusted the accused to exercise his judgment without individual consultation. The senior leaders trusted the accused to kill everyone at the right time. 
ការពីបានដោយមានជំងឺថែចជំនឿចាប់ចោតបានធ្វើការងារនឹងក្នុងភាពភ័យខ្លាចនោះទេ Far from being unwittingly entangled in the criminal policies of the Khmer Rouge, the accused was a strong believer in the regime's communist ideals and its ill-conceived revolution. It's this firm political belief and philosophical grounding that gave him the resolve to develop and prove himself personally and professionally in the spirit of the revolution and to become an intelligence and security expert on whom the regime relied to such a significant extent. Although he claims that he believed in the revolution, that, that he believed in the revolution early on, but felt trapped after 1971, all of the evidence in this case clearly disproved it. As the defence rightly point out, no one dreams of becoming a mass murderer. However, in this case, the accused developed such an obsession with CPK's ideology that he was prepared to do anything at all to further it. Of course, the nature and the extent of the crimes in 21 could not be justified no matter how laudable the accused believed the goal to be. Evidence of his level of participation in the crimes, both at M13 and S21, leaves no doubt this accused was a leading crusader for the CPK and not a fearful, reluctant actor, a prisoner, a hostage of the regime. As I mentioned earlier, Francois Bizeau had the opportunity to observe the accused's belief system based on many conversations the two men had during his detention at M13 in 1971. When he was released, he recorded the beliefs of the man he left behind. I quote, I realized that in front of me there was a man who looked very much like many friends of mine, a Marxist, a human being who was a Marxist, who was prepared to surrender his life for his country and for the revolution. At the time Bizeau formed his opinion, it was six months after the accused had started at M13, at a time when he had already committed many violent beatings against detainees, of which Bizeau has told us. His belief in the CPK is based on facts. ส่งเจนกลางเชอ